Hey guys, it's Shadow the Rat, and for today's video, I want to do something a little bit different and go over three ads that I found on Craigslist Pets, which are for different breeders selling rats. So two of these ads are pretty bad and riddled with red flags, and the third one is a little bit better. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to discuss the red flags in particular that make some of these breeders so bad and ones that you don't want to go to. Because I think one of the big problems you'll find in the rat community is that a lot of people, when they get into having rats, they want to have a good first experience, so they try to go to a breeder, which makes sense. However, unfortunately, there are a lot of people calling themselves breeders who just put two animals together and they don't really care about the outcome other than getting babies they can sell. And that means that a lot of those animals won't be great temperament-wise or health-wise or lifespan-wise. And it just gives you a bad experience. And the other thing it does is it kind of makes all breeders look bad. That being said, I wanted to go ahead and talk about these ads on Craigslist so you can see some of the things to absolutely avoid. Now I want to mention one more thing before I jump into it, and that's that I don't have a problem with breeders posting on Craigslist. I think that can be an okay way to kind of get people to know that you're in the area. But a big thing that will separate the ethical breeders on Craigslist from the non-ethical breeders is not only will the ethical breeders be rehoming rats at a good age and actually giving you good advice, like saying you need to have at least two of them, but on top of that, they're either going to link you to a website or Facebook page or somewhere where they have more information about their rat and they're also going to have an adoption application, which is basically where they get information from you that shows that you know enough about rats to have them as pets and take good care of them. So if you find a breeder on Craigslist who isn't asking any questions, that's not a good sign. That breeder is probably not an ethical breeder. Anyways, let's go ahead and finally talk about these postings. So posting number one says, Baby Dumbo slash Fancy Rats, three weeks old, ready for new homes. Oh my gosh, we already have a lot of things going on and we're just in the title. So first of all, three weeks old is not old enough to rehome. This is just awful. Three weeks is when rats are starting to wean. Now yes, some rats have weaned by three weeks, but they still shouldn't be separated out yet. At three weeks, rats are typically still getting some nutrients from their mother's milk, and even if they are eating enough to sustain themselves, which isn't always the case, but even if it is the case, they need that socialization with other baby rats and with their mom, and they shouldn't be separated out until about five weeks. I say about five weeks because depending on the line, rats can become sexually mature between five and six weeks of age. Typically, I tell people to separate out their males at four weeks and six days because if you don't know the genetics of your line, then you don't want to chance them becoming sexually mature early at five weeks and then breeding and creating more issues. So it's better to separate them out a little earlier than later in that case, but you should be waiting till at least four weeks and six days, which this person obviously isn't. The earliest you should be rehoming your rats is five weeks, which is when they're sexually mature. But even that's pretty frowned upon because five weeks is so young. Rats still are really in that prime socialization period at that time, and it's best for them to stay with their siblings and just be with other rats for another week before being rehomed. Good breeders will typically have a male rat or few who are very calm and chill with babies, and they will go ahead and put the male babies with these rats for another week or few so that they can kind of have some more socialization before going to their homes. And of course the female babies will be kept with mom for a few more weeks and then rehomed. I can understand in the case of an oops litter rehoming early at like five weeks because you don't have space, but if you're someone who's a breeder, you should have a setup so that you can keep back the babies for a few more weeks before rehoming them at six to eight weeks. So this is obviously already a huge red flag because they're not even waiting till five weeks. They're rehoming at three weeks. That is crazy young. I cannot stress how terrible this is. Anyways, I'll move on to the next point, uh, which is that they're saying Dumbo slash fancy rats. And that already is another red flag because all domestic rats are fancy rats. The word fancy literally just means domestic in this case. Like fancy rat just means domestic rat. It doesn't matter what they look like or what their variation is. They're all fancy rats. And this word here, Dumbo, which is kind of the most confusing in these cases, just means that they have a mutation that causes their ears to appear on the side of their head instead of the top of their head. They are still fancy rats, they just have a mutation causing an appearance modifier. So moving on from the title, which like I said is just really bad, we're going to go ahead and read what the ad says itself. 
So it says baby Dumbo slash fancy rats, three weeks old. There is a rehoming fee. Will not deliver. Serious people only, please. Please contact me when you're sure you want one. Oh my gosh, we already have another problem here. They only require you to get one. So not only are they rehoming these babies way too young, but on top of that, they're also okay with you just taking one. So this is just another terrible thing to see. And it's another reason that you know that this person does not really care about their rats. So then it says, must make appointment 24 hours ahead. Will meet by my home in public. Are eating food also. That's uh, kind of another red flag here because like I said, three weeks is when baby rats are still weaning typically. Some of them might be done weaning, but just because they're eating some solid food does not mean they're weaned. Rats actually start to nibble on solid food at two weeks of age. But just because they're nibbling on it doesn't mean they're getting all their nutrients from it. They're not ingesting enough at that point to meet their nutritional needs. And even at three weeks, they might not be ingesting enough solid food to support themselves without supplementary milk. So just because they say that they're eating something doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually fully weaned. So the next thing it says is make great pets, love to play and climb, way better than hamsters or other small rodents. Very intelligent, great for kids five and over. Please email me for my phone number. Four males and one female available now. I have two older males, don't bite, two months old, need homes, and one large male can be rehomed or used as a feeder. So the fact that they're saying that one of their males can go as a feeder kind of shows you how they're viewing the rats here. Uh, they might be breeding for feeders as well as pets. Uh, this ad does seem geared towards pet owners because it says ready for new homes. But you can see from that one line that they kind of view rats in that disposable way. It's uh, not great. So yeah, this whole ad is just a huge walking red flag. I would never recommend anyone go to this breeder. I mean, obviously you're gonna feel bad for the rats. I feel bad for the rats. They're not going to go to good situations. You can tell by reading this ad that the person really just doesn't care what happens to them. Unfortunately, this is the kind of situation that a lot of people will find themselves in when they try to look up breeders in their area because breeders like this will come up first because they're on Craigslist and that's an easy accessible source. And if you take this at face value and don't do any more research of your own, well, it's you know not a great situation for anyone, the rat or the person getting them. Anyways, this is just a really good example of a breeder that you want to avoid. So now we're going to move on to the second listing, which is a little bit better, but it also has some red flags in it that I wanted to show you because they're a little bit more subtle. So first of all, it says purebred rare Himalayan rats, Siamese cat patterns. Now this title is already problematic for several reasons. First of all, it says purebred. Rats do not have breeds, so you can't have a purebred rat. Now rats can have pedigrees and you do have certain breeders who keep track of their rats over many, many generations and so they have pedigrees for them, but they don't have actual breeds. And this is because rats have not been bred for long enough to develop breeds. Animal breeds are basically when an animal has different characteristics linked together. So, you know, an animal looks a certain way, but that's linked with them having a certain sort of temperament or with health issues or with just a bunch of different things. Like if I tell you golden retriever, you probably have a certain idea Idea in your mind of how those dogs are going to behave but if I tell you Himalayan rat you have no idea what their temperament is going to be like because there's really no link between a rat's temperament and their looks and that's because rats just haven't been bred domestically long enough for that to happen so this already kind of tells you that the person doesn't really know too much about rats they're going into it with this idea of breeds which is just not something that applies to rats so moving on we have the fact that they're calling Himalayan rats rare Himalayan is not a rare variation in rats. It's really easy to breed for, its genetics are well known, and they are found everywhere. So them calling it rare already makes me suspicious that they don't know very much about rats, they don't know much about their genetics, and also tells me they're probably going to be charging more for their rats than maybe they should, and that maybe they're trying to make some money on them, which is kind of hard in the rat fancy unless you're breeding like thousands of feeders. So just kind of giving me some warning bells right from the start with their terminology. So it says, a project I've been working on for about two years with my small battery has finally paid off. By the way, there's lots of spelling mistakes here. I don't think spelling mistakes make it a bad ad or anything like that. Obviously, all of us have misspelled something. But at the same time, you know, if you're going to be posting something like this and you're trying to get your rats to go to good homes, you'd think you'd take a second to read over it one more time. And it really doesn't feel like they did that here. 
The other thing I wanted to comment about the sentence in particular is that they said they've been breeding their rats for two years. That's actually something I like quite a bit because most ethical breeders will have been breeding for a year or two before they start rehoming to the public. And the reason they do this is because they want to select out any sort of temperament or health issues they have in their lines. And that's very difficult to do if you immediately rehome your rats to owners. Because the thing is that not every rat owner is going to be updating their breeder constantly about any health issues or temperament issues. And if the breeder really wants to know what's going on, they have to have at least one full cycle of a rat's lifespan, which is usually around two years. So if they can keep their first generation for two years and they can kind of watch what happens to them and see what their temperament is and if it changes as they age, you know, do they develop hormonal aggression? Do they develop early health issues? All these sorts of things are very important to breeders for obvious reasons. And it's not as easy to know about all these things if you've rehomed your rats because, well, not everyone's going to check in with you. So yeah, it's a good sign to see that someone's been breeding for several years before rehoming to the public. But unfortunately, this ad has a lot of other things going wrong. So moving on, it says, I'm offering my first Himalayan colored fancy rats to the public. They're going on four and a half months. All Rex and all have dark noses and hind ends are getting there. So another thing I want to mention here is that they say the rats are four and a half months and still developing points. The rats will have already developed their point color by this point. Typically, Himalayan rats develop their points between 6 to 12 weeks of age. So their rats are well past that point, and they will not be getting darker points, really. But one thing you find with Himalayan rats, Siamese rats, Tonkinese rats, Burmese rats, is that their color actually depends on how cold it is. So when it gets colder outside, their points get darker. And when it gets warmer, their points get lighter. So because of that, they could be seeing the points darken, but that's because of the temperature and not because of the rats still molting. That's another thing that maybe isn't great. You know, it doesn't seem like they looked into Himalayan rats at all. Uh, and I just feel like if you're going to be breeding a certain variety, you should be doing some research on it first, which it doesn't really feel like they did here. So the next thing it says is they're out of two pure Himalayan Rex parents. And I'm sorry to stop us again here, but this is another thing I have problems with because the thing is, you can't look at a rat and immediately know its genetics. Like you have to test breed them to know what their genetics are and they could be holding all sorts of things. So then it says, my guys hide in tend to darken more with time. They carry Dumbo, mama is Dumbo. I've had on rare occasions, Dumbos come out of babies of Dumbos who were top ear. So this is another thing I have problems with. I'm so sorry, I'm really just going to town here. So the thing with Dumbo is it's a recessive mutation and it's a simple recessive. You have two copies of Dumbo genes, you're going to have a Dumbo rat. You have a rat with one copy of Dumbo and one copy of the typical standard ears, they're going to show standard ears, but if you breed them to another rat who carries Dumbo or who is a Dumbo, some of the litter will be Dumbo rats. So this is what they're seeing here. But again, it doesn't feel like they have done any genetic research because if they did, they'd know why they're having some Dumbos pop up, but not a lot. If this person wanted a full Dumbo rattery, it would be super easy. You take the mom, which is a Dumbo, and you take one of her babies who has to carry Dumbo because keep in mind that you're getting one gene from each parent. So if mom has two copies of the Dumbo gene, she can only give Dumbo to the babies. So all the babies are carriers for sure. So you take mom and you breed her to one of her male babies who is a for sure carrier of Dumbo. And that litter is going to have some Dumbos. So then you can take the mom and breed her to one of the males from that litter who has Dumbo ears and you will get all Dumbos. Now, I know that not everyone is a huge fan of line breeding, but line breeding in rats is perfectly safe. It can be done for dozens of generations without any sorts of issues, and that is how every ethical breeder gets certain varieties or even selects for good temperament and health. Anyways, like I was saying, if this person wanted Dumbo ears, which it sounds like they do want considering this line here, it would be super easy to get Dumbo ears. But again, it's pretty obvious they haven't done any research into the genetics of the rats that they're dealing with. So again, not a great sign. So next of all, it says, these guys are very sweet and laid back. They don't fight, chew, or really get bothered by anything. They take a little to warm up to new people, but love and treat do the trick. I moved house while I had these ladies and they seem to settle in pretty well and easily to the new home. These pictures are slightly older by about a month. They have darkened up a little more since. If you need, just ask for more pictures via text. Then it says, I'm asking a rehoming fee of 30 a piece. I currently have three females available. Please text me if interested. Time doesn't matter to me. I'm a night owl. 
So two final red flags for us here. First is they're asking $30, which isn't a terrible amount. And I have paid more for my rats from a good breeder. But that being said, not only did this whole post not inspire any confidence in me and this person being an ethical breeder, nowhere in this ad did they say that you need to get two rats. They didn't mention that rats as social animals need to be in groups. I just, I don't understand. None of these ads mention it. So just some more signs that this breeder is not an ethical breeder. They're just not really showing signs of being a good breeder. They don't seem to care where their rats are going. They're just trying to sell them. So definitely a bad sign and another breeder that I would not recommend going to. Now the final ad that I want to look at is the one that I consider the best and a breeder that could be ethical. Now I have not looked into them so I don't know if they're an ethical breeder or not. I just wanted to judge it based on the ad alone and kind of show you why this ad has signs that the breeder is more likely to be ethical than the others. So first of all it says Sweet Baby Harley Rats. Nothing wrong with that title uh, and it doesn't have any misinformation in it so good sign. So reading the description, it says, Hello, I have a few baby rats looking for forever homes. I have Harley, Rex, Double Rex, Velveteen, Russian Blue, Black, Siamese, Wharton, Hooded, Roan, and Blaze. Babies are handled from birth and are completely disease-slash-pathogen-free. They're used to people and love to be cuddled, held, and played with. If you'd like to see all my available rats, you can see them here. Then it gives you a website, and finally it says, All adopters must fill out an adoption application if they're interested in bringing home any babies. This assures me that they're going to appropriate homes. So here we go, finally we have a good sign. As you can see here, this person isn't trying to just sell their rats on Craigslist, they're just using it as a ways to get their rattery name out there. They're actually directing you to another website, which is all about their rattery, I presume, and that has an adoption application, which is going to have questions on it for you so that the breeder knows the rats are going to a good home. This is just so important. The breeder should be making sure that their rats are going to a good home. Because not only is the breeder trying to selectively breed for traits that we want to see in our pets, like better health and better temperament, but they also need to be advocating for their animals and making sure that they're going to homes that are going to take good care of them. If a breeder is just giving away rats without any care to where they're going and they're not asking any questions of the adopters, they're typically not a good breeder because they're not putting any care into where their animals are going, which means that they're not caring all that much about their animals. So this sign here is really great because it's telling you you have to go to their website in order to adopt any rats. Now I'm going to pull up their website in a second, but just know that this ad right here is really good. I know it doesn't have any information about needing multiple rats or what age they are, but that's okay because it's directing you to their website and it doesn't have any misinformation on it either. So I've gone ahead and pulled up their website. They're called Rats to Letter Rats. And let's go ahead and see their available litters. Seems like they don't currently have any rats available, but that's okay because we're just gonna look at their other information. So they have some information about their breeder rats, which is always a good thing. I like seeing information about breeder rats because it means that they actually care about the rats that they're breeding. They're not just putting together two random animals and just hoping for the best. So we have quite a bit of information here about the breeder rats, which I really like. And moving on, we have prices slash FAQ. So you have these prices. For my area, this is pretty standard. I know I just kind of shit on the other breeder about having $30 rats when these rats are way more, but I can tell you right now that I feel way more confident in going to this breeder right here just because they have clearly shown me that they're willing to put some time into researching about rats because all this information here, it's all been correct so far. Whereas with the other ad, it was not. So we're going to go ahead and look at their FAQ. So first of all, it says, can I buy a single rat from you? So they do rehome single rats, but they do make sure that you have other rats. And they also make sure that it's appropriate to introduce a baby, uh, which is good. So you have to have younger rats in order to get one single younger rat. And they're probably not going to let you get one rat if you have like a two-year-old rat. Because in that case, the two-year-old rat is going to pass away a lot sooner than the baby rat, which leaves you with a situation where you then have to adopt another rat. So you might as well just adopt two from the start and then introduce those to your old rat. Uh, so I'm really glad to see this. Not every breeder will adopt out single rats, even if you have a young rat. Uh, but some will, and I don't think that it's a sign of bad ethics as long as they are looking into the situation like this breeder does here. So clearly they do care about their rats. They talk some about a deposit, which I think is completely reasonable. People do back out all the time, and that's very difficult for breeders to deal with. And the final thing I want to focus on is what age can the baby rat come home? 
Uh, and it says, I feel like I let my babies go a little earlier than most ratteries, about six weeks old. Make sure my babies are fully weaned before going to new homes. I feel letting them go a little earlier helps the babies bond to their new owners easier. So I don't really think it helps them bond easier if they're rehomed younger. Rats are just very adaptable and they can bond at any age. But that being said, six weeks is pretty much the typical minimum, at least in my area. I see most breeders in my area rehome around six weeks of age. I have seen some areas where eight weeks or even ten weeks is the norm. It just depends where you are and what variety you're working with. But that being said, I don't think there's any issues with babies being rehomed at six weeks. So I think that this breeder and all is a pretty good breeder. They seem to be ethical. Obviously, I would have to look into reviews and I'd maybe have to talk to a few people who have gotten rats from this rattery. But from what I see on their website, they seem to be doing a good job. So this is a good example of someone who is advertising on Craigslist, but they're not actually selling through Craigslist. They're just trying to inform people that, hey, we're in this area. And if you are looking for rats, you can come to our site and you know, fill out an adoption application. And if you're approved, then you can get some rats from us. Uh, and they make sure that you're doing it in an ethical way and that you can actually care for them. So overall, it seems like a good rattery. And I think it's a good post to end our video on. Uh, we've seen two examples of breeders that are not great and likely backyard breeders on Craigslist. And we've seen this one example of an ethical breeder. So hopefully this video helps some. I know it was kind of long, um, but I just thought that it was an interesting topic. And I hope this helps some people who are either new rat owners or who are looking to get rats from a breeder for the first time. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye!